Orion Shalom Akim, Zahav Spiritway and Judah of the GMS Mississippi Camp, giving all and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Also giving double honors to the Apostles of the Great Millstone, Rule Well. Peace and blessings to the house of David the elect. All right. Thousands face threat of eviction after HUD contracts expire due to shutdown. All right. This is an article about how the shutdown which is the longest shutdown in U.S. history, has affected the HUD House community. Now, if anybody knows anything about HUD House, it's responsible for providing um, space for low-income tenants, all right? And, and in this setup, a lot of that includes Jake, so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics, okay? All right, but it's basically low-income housing, all right? So I'm going to read a good bit of the article, all right? It says, with the partial government shutdown on the verge of becoming the longest in U.S. history, which is currently is the longest now at this point, many housing advocates fear thousands of low-income Americans are at risk of being evicted. More than 1,000 government-backed housing contracts have been expired and potentially more would do so in the coming weeks. Since the shutdown began last month, approximately 1,150 Federal rental assistance contracts have not been renewed due to funding lapse at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. All right. And I'm just going to skip, you know, to a few paragraphs. It says, while the expired contracts so far only account for about 5% of HUD's project-based contracts, it is causing concern that more of the 1.2 million low-income families housed in these multifamily properties be in danger of losing homes as the shutdown lingers. So I'm not going to read the full article because the point was pretty much made out of the article, and that's basically the government shutdown is going to be responsible for the eviction of people who basically de depend on government funding, all right? And you know what, Jake? That's your fault because you haven't, depend you haven't depended on your how about shimmy how about man. Yahweh Bashim Shah, the Heavenly Father provides, man. All right? When Hurricane Katrina happened, she like, I can, when Hurricane Katrina hit, everybody was asking, where is FEMA? Where is FEMA? What about the Most High? All right? Because the Most High allowed the hurricane to happen. The Most High allowed those levies, levies to break. Levies to break. You know, Esau might have broken those levies, but Esau is the sword of the Most High. Though it's another sword move, man. Another attack from Esau. Ultimately, by the most high. Same thing with this government shutdown, man. Now you're going to be forced to have to depend on the, the most high. But a lot of you are not. And the proof is a chip. All right? The end result of this government shutdown, all right, if it continues, it's going to be the chip. Because after your suffering, you're going to crawl on Esau with all, on all fours, man, to Esau, man. And when he brings that chip, you're going to think that chip is your Lord and Savior, man. You're going to think it's the water in the desert, all right? Because you have offspring. You have, uh, like I said, sons and daughters, all right? You have people that you care about, and you want them to have provision. So what are you going to do? You're going to get that chip if you're not the elect, okay? But the hell in the, in the catastrophic events, the calamities that's about to come to America is going to be a result of you depending on the government. Now, you have a place in Nigeria, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, called Lagos, Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. And basically, these are basically jakes that's neglected by the government, okay? But instead of depending on government funding, government welfare, they all have an open uh, market network that allows them to supply to each other. They hustle, all right. They have, they sell fish, they sell everything, but they basically depend on their own ingenuity to survive. But Jake in America is different because for the past four hundred years, pursuant to Revelation, the twelfth chapter, you've been depending on Esau because you've been nourished by that dragon. Okay. Which I'm going to get it. You know, I'm going to go and get it. I'm not going to keep talking. All right. You've been nourished by that damn dragon, okay? I'm 
I'm sorry, was it the serpent? Let's go to go to Revelations 12. All right, Revelations 12. Okay, as though they don't know what I'm talking about. Just bear with me one second, I can go to get the scripture of Revelations 12. All right. And the woman flee into the wilderness, cast out. All right, this is Revelations 12 and 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. All right. But that time, time and half a time, all right, is 350 years. One time is 100 years times in the plural form is 200 years. All right. So 100 plus 200 is 300. And it says in a half a time, that's 50 years. So 350 years from around 1619 to ultimately now, which around 1970, for 350 years, we've been nourished by Esau. We, we haven't been functioning as an independent um, nation within America, okay? We've been basically supported by Esau, whether it's through government funding like the HUD house, all right, or you clocking in for Esau, okay? Or even if you start a business, you have to start a business through Esau, okay? All right, so that's being nourished, but that nourishment is about to run out, okay? That nourishment is about to run out. Now, you're, now your true belief system, you're gonna see, we're going to see who is your God. Is he either going to be the Most High, all right, or Esau? Because it also says what? The just to live by his faith. So are you going to live by your faith, or are you going to live by Esau putting a chip in you so he can feed you but track you at the same time, Okay? So, from there, I want to go back to Isaiah, all right? Because then, hey, then they're going to know who, who, who are their chosen, man, and expect miracles, all right? For brothers that hold on, it says, what, what the most high have not left the righteous forsaken nor seed begging for bread, man. So, that's going to that's gonna include the times to come, all right? The most high is not a man that he should lie. Men lie. Men forget. Men make commitments and then get distracted. You know, I've done it. Make a commitment that I get sidetracked. All right? But most eyes, not us, man. All right? Isaiah 31 and 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because there are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh. All right? Where is Egypt? It's America. Well, who's Egypt? It's America. Then it says they go down to Egypt for help. When you when you were getting HUD house and those different government fundings, all right? Those going down to Egypt for help, all right? It's not that that's a bad thing if you happen to be a part of a HUD house community, but you fully depend on that, man, all right? Now your dependency is about to be depleted, man, all right? But with us, man, like I said, the dust should live by his faith. But that's just another update as far as the effects of this shutdown, the downward ripple effect of the shutdown, which is only going to get worse because there are going to be more break-ins, more robberies, more theft, all right, more murder. Hey, but hey, to the next lesson, Shalom.